Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to look at adjustment layers in Photoshop Elements. This is a special kind of layer that's worth learning about. I'm going to break it down for you, and I think that by the end of this video, you'll have a good basic understanding of adjustment layers. Specifically, I'm going to answer how do you make an adjustment layer, what are adjustment layers, and what are some of the benefits of adjustment layers. Let's start with how do you make an adjustment layer. There are actually two ways to make an adjustment layer. One way is to go up to the layer menu and choose new adjustment layer. The second way is to go to the layers panel and click on the half white half gray icon. Let's go over to elements and take a look at each way. Here we are in the full edit mode of Photoshop elements. I'm using version 10 for this video but it should be very similar in any other version. I have two photos open, one of our dog Lydia and one is of our cat Hank. I'm going to combine the two photos by clicking and dragging on the photo of Hank and dropping him over the photo of Lydia. To do that I have to go over to the toolbar and get the move tool. And now I can just click and drag and it puts Hank in the same photo with Lydia and now I'm going to close the photo of Hank by clicking on the close box. And let's move the layers panel closer by clicking and dragging on its tab. And I'm going to click and drag down on the lower right corner to make it a little bigger. You can see in the layers panel that the photo of Hank came in on its own layer above the background layer. I'm going to use the Move tool to click and drag the new layer to the lower left corner of my document. And it kind of snaps right in there. Now I'm going to double click right on the name of the layer, Layer 1, which is the default name that Elements gave it, and change the name of the layer to Hank by typing it. When you're done typing, you can click anywhere on that layer other than on the type box to accept the new name and get out of typing mode. Now that we have that set up, let's get back to the reason we came here in the first place, which is to see how you create an adjustment layer. I mentioned there are two ways. The way I always do it is from the Layers panel. Just click on this half white, half gray circle in the Layers panel and this list pops up and the first three items in the list are actually fill layers. They are solid color, gradient, and pattern. And they're grouped together with the adjustment layers. I'm going to ignore those three because I want us to focus on adjustment layers in this video. So the next eight choices in the list are all adjustment layers. And you create an adjustment layer by clicking on the type of adjustment you want to make. Let's click on the first one in the list, which is Levels. Notice a new layer appears at the top of the Layers panel. This is our adjustment layer. Also notice over in the Panels bin, a Levels Adjustment panel appeared. That's where you make your adjustments. I'm going to click and drag on the tab of the Adjustment panel to bring it closer to our image. So that's one way to create an adjustment layer. I'm going to click and drag on it and drag it to the trash icon in the layers panel to delete it. Notice when I do, the adjustment panel goes blank. The second way you can add an adjustment layer is to go up to the layer menu and partway down you'll see there's new fill layer and new adjustment layer. Remember in the Layers panel, they have both of them together in the list. When I slide down to New Adjustment Layer, you see we have the same eight choices as we did at the bottom of the list in the Layers panel. I'll choose Levels from the list again. A dialog box appears. I'm going to click OK and we get exactly the same thing as we did when we used the Layers panel to add an adjustment layer. So those are the two different ways you can create an adjustment layer. Now let's look at what adjustment layers are. There are four main features that make adjustment layers special. 
One is adjustment layers allow you to make certain changes to your images without altering the pixels of that image. Second, you can go back at any time in the future and make changes to the edits that you originally made to your image. Three, they can affect more than one layer. And four, they come with their own layer mask. Let's go back to Elements and dig into these features, starting with the first feature in our list. And I'm just going to move these in a little bit closer. There we go. I think the biggest advantage of adjustment layers is that they let you work non-destructively. In other words, if I made, let's say, a Levels move by going up to the Enhance menu and choosing Levels, the change would occur by actually getting rid of and changing the values of some of the pixels in my image. But I can make the exact same levels move with an adjustment layer and I get the exact same visual result, but the pixels of my image are left safely unchanged under the adjustment layer. That's because the change is contained on the adjustment layer. So do you see the difference between the two ways of making the same change? With one method, we permanently change the building blocks of our image, which are pixels, but with the adjustment layer method, absolutely no change is made to the pixels. We still have our original image safely unaltered, just like it was when we first opened it. I'll show you the distinction in more detail in the next video, Adjustment Layers Part 2. Let's take a look at what kinds of changes we can make with adjustment layers. As I mentioned before, there are eight different adjustment layers to choose from, and they all pretty much either affect the colors or the tones and brightness of an image. It would take too much time in this video to explain each of the eight adjustments in detail, but let's just quickly look at what they are. Here are the eight different adjustment layers you can choose from. Let's start with levels and take a quick look at each one. A Levels Adjustment Layer is probably the most used of the eight adjustment layers. A Levels Adjustment lets you make many different kinds of changes. Some components of a photo that you can change with Levels are color, brightness, or contrast. Next is Brightness Contrast. A Brightness Contrast Adjustment does just what it sounds like. It makes your image lighter or darker, and it increases or decreases contrast without changing color. Sometimes making a contrast move with levels will cause a shift in color. Next is hue saturation. A hue saturation adjustment lets you make some pretty drastic changes, but you can also use it for more subtle moves. One of the more dramatic effects is made with the colorize box. Click on the colorize box and then move the hue slider to make your photo a tint of all one color, similar to this. Another effect is to move the saturation slider all the way over to the left and all the color is removed and your photo becomes black and white. Next is gradient map. A gradient map adjustment changes the color or tones to the colors or tones you choose and distributes it gradually. So it kind of changes the color and spreads it out over the whole photo depending on what you choose from the gradient map pop-up list. The next adjustment layer choice is photo filter. A photo filter adjustment simulates the traditional filters that photographers would put over their lenses to warm or cool the lighting. Basically, if your photo looks too yellow or warm, you can apply a cooling filter from the drop-down list and adjust the density to get a more accurate color. And the same is true if it looks too cool, you would apply a warming filter. Next is Invert. An Invert adjustment changes the colors of your photo to their opposite values and makes it look like a film negative. This is mostly used for special effects. And then we have Threshold. A Threshold adjustment changes every pixel in your image to either solid black or solid white, not even any grays, just black or white. 
A posterize adjustment reduces the number of colors in your photo so it creates a banding effect rather than the usual smooth transition from one color to another. It's mostly used for special effects. So that's a quick overview of the eight different choices you have for adjustment layers. Now let's take a look at how you can go back later and change the settings you made with an adjustment layer. After making a change to your photo with an adjustment layer, you can open that photo anytime later and the adjustment layer will still be in the layers panel. Just make sure you save it as either a Photoshop or a TIFF file format. I'll explain more thoroughly in the adjustment layers part 2 video. So let's add a hue saturation adjustment layer. First I'm going to throw away this levels adjustment by dragging it to the trash can and click on hue saturation and I'm going to crank the saturation up to about 50. So you just click and drag on this slider and let's pretend we saved and closed the file and opened it up three months later. Well our adjustment layer would still be in the layers panel just like you see it here. Then the adjustments panel would still show the exact adjustments we had made and we could completely change our original adjustments. This is one of the things that make adjustment layers so powerful. The fact that you can open up that photo months or even years later and readjust your settings or you could just drag the adjustment layer to the trash and you would return to the original state of your photo just as if you had never made a change to it. Now let's see how adjustment layers let you affect more than one layer. I'm going to throw away my hue saturation adjustment layer from before. And normally to edit a layer you have to first make sure that it's the active layer in the layers panel by clicking on it. Then you can go up to the enhance menu or the filter menu and choose an item from the menu. And if I choose adjust color, adjust hue saturation from the enhance menu and I boost the uh, saturation way up you'll notice that only the active layer was affected. I'll cancel out of that and if I choose hue saturation from my adjustment layers list the adjustment layer goes above my other two layers because it will always be added above the active layer and if I move the saturation slider all the way over to the right like I did before now you'll see that both layers are affected. But what if you did only want the layer right below the adjustment layer to be affected by it? Well you can do that too. Notice in the adjustment panels there are these tiny icons. I'm going to zoom in so you can see those better. The one that looks like a black and white circle overlapping will clip the adjustment layer to the layer right below it and only affect that layer. So I'll click on that and now you can see only the Hank layer is affected and also notice that in the layers panel there's a down facing arrow indicating that that adjustment layer is clipped to the layer below it and what that means is it's only affecting that layer and if I want to go back so that all the layers under it are affected I just click on that little icon again in the adjustments panel and our final attribute of what an adjustment layer is something you probably already noticed but let's take a quick look it's that an adjustment layer automatically comes with a layer mask in the layers panel you can see we still have our hue saturation adjustment layer let's say I wanted to make Lydia's nose more black instead of that reddish brown that it is now well I could just go to the hue saturation adjustment panel and move the saturation slider all the way over to the left to take all the color out of my photo. But I don't want it out of the whole photo, I just want the dog's nose black. If you saw my video on layer masks, you know that the rule for layer masks is white reveals, black conceals. And right now, by default, our layer mask is completely white so it is revealing our desaturation move on that whole layer. I can hide our move or conceal it by filling the layer mask with black. 
and there's a couple ways to do that and I'm just going to go up to the edit menu and choose fill layer in the dialog box that appears from the pop-up list in the use field I'll choose black and then click OK and the layer mask turns completely black hiding the effect of our adjustment layer to bring back the effect just in Lydia's nose I can click on the brush tool in the toolbox make sure my foreground color is set to white if it's not white you can press the letter D on your keyboard and it will set the foreground and background colors to their default which is white for the foreground now all I have to do is paint over her nose so let me do that and because I'm painting with white it reveals our setting in the adjustment layer and one other quick tip if I feel like her nose looks too black which I do in this case I can just lower the opacity for the adjustment layer by sliding the opacity slider in the layers panel and I'll move it down to about 50 percent and I think that looks a little better way back at the beginning of this video I promised to show you how to make an adjustment layer and we went over the two different ways of doing that next I tried to explain exactly what adjustment layers are by showing you how they work and the four attributes that make them special I think in the process of doing that it showed some of the benefits so I hope you found this helpful in beginning to understand adjustment layers be sure to further cement your understanding by watching the next video adjustment layers part two until then this is Rick saying take care